Hello, Bill the Artist here, back with another How to Draw lesson, and today we are going to be doing RM, Rap Monster, from BTS. Anyway, we did Young Cook before, and we've also done other singers, but before we go any further, please do like and subscribe, tick the bell to be notified when new uh, videos and How to Draw lessons will be made available, and do post the time lapses, do remember that. Also, please do use the hashtag Drawing with Billy. It's great to see people of all ages and abilities who are enjoying these tutorials. I have had people as young as eight and, and I think a seven year old. And it's just fantastic right the way up to uh, people who are getting into drawing in their old age as well. It's just a joy. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're eight or you are 80. You can enjoy drawing. That's the main thing. So do enjoy your drawing. Anyway, we have like I say, we can do these portraits. We have Ariana Grande, we have Young Cook, we have KSI. There's also Billie Eilish. Check out the How to Draw Portraits playlist and there are loads on there. And there's lots of others as well. The latest lesson uh, that went live the other day was asked for a very, very, very long time. And we have Jenny Weasley uh, from... The Chamber of Secrets with Tom Riddle's Diary. Now, that is up online, and that is on the Harry Potter playlist. Now, again, we have... There's our Harry. Anyway, do check out, and you can see in these multi-videos, you can see the different videos of, of all the different characters in the Harry Potter playlist. There's lots and lots and lots. Now, again, there is my general overall how to draw playlist of which there's more than 130 lessons on there there's i don't know 180 videos with all all the bits and pieces on there but it's just there to help and encourage you so you can use and utilize all the techniques that i show you how to draw those cartoons characters and the how to draw playlist things like toy story Secret Life of Pets, there's The Incredibles, there's Olaf. And again, the grid that I use for these is in Olaf. But I do use, do check out in the cards and in the description, in the banner now, how to draw anything, part one. Now, again, in that I do say you can draw anything from a bird, a bee, a flea, a tree, a horse, a house, or anything else. And that's the whole point. But with Olaf as well, there is this grid that I actually use. It's a time-honoured technique used by old masters, people who did grand paintings that are in grand houses around the world. It's phenomenal. People who do murals, National Portrait Award winners use the grid technique. So anyone who says, it's cheating. No, it's not. It's a technique. Now, again, the people who do the full freehand portraits with a live sitter, absolutely fantastic. What a skill. They've learned to do it all completely freehand. That's amazing. But... There's nothing wrong with using and learning techniques. So let's get to the paper. Let me please just carefully move Ariana, KSI and Young Cook out of the way. Oh, there's the blank paper. I should have just lifted that card. Yeah, that, that, that was supposed to carry ah, those three off. Anyway, they are now safely out of the way. Here we have my piece of paper and it's got this two centimeter grid on now if you check up in the cards and the descriptions there's a link to a video shows me actually laying down the grids that i use and this grid in particular it's a short video only about 26 minutes now this is a two centimeter grid there's a bit of a border all the way around because i like this center line and this is on the 105. This is A4 paper. It's 210 millimeters by 297. That's 21 centimeters by 29.7 millimeters. Again, in this banner, all the measurements that you need for these all the way across are in the banner for you now. And I use this again, as I say, with the shapes to show you how to draw easily and to make it simple to see people who are really young or beginners of whatever age, being able to draw a face which is deemed very, very complex is absolutely fantastic and a joy for me. So, right now, we will get on with drawing young Cook. We have the trusty 2B pencil. Now, I'm going to come in and we're going to start right on the centre line. So, one two five right on the center line so the one two five line here the horizontal on the center line and we've got 
his eye. Kim Nang Yung Yoon is and it's not Young Cookie it's RM we're drawing today. Do excuse me. Uh, yeah, just because I've drawn, literally I've got Young Cook just to the left of me right now, staring at me while I'm drawing his band member RM. So here we are starting and we are drawing Young, not Young Cook. He's still looking at me. This is funny. Anyway, we are drawing RM, a rap monster. And what we need, I'm going to draw a box, a rectangle, a box is a square, basically. So here we've got, and it's kind of in a third, a box. And I'm just going to whack in that little semicircle shape for his eye. Now, on the 85 line, coming down to the 145, we've got a triangle here for his nose, the highlight on his nose on the side. And I'm just going to draw a D shape there on that side. And the bottom of the nose comes underneath. But here you can see you've got this triangle where we've got this shadow. Now, coming right over past the 65 line, we've got his right eye. Now I'm just looking at it, it's just slightly, it's not perfectly level, it's just slightly higher and slimmer. So it comes to the centre, so I'm drawing that line and then just to the right of the centre between the 45 and the 65. Now again, we've got the little semicircle. So we've got a rectangle and a triangle and a D shape. That are appearing on here. Now I've drawn these lines on quite dark. You don't have to draw them on as dark as I do. I only do this so that you can see them. Now here we have his eyebrow. So again I'm going to draw a rectangle in which is above the 105 but here you can see we've got a D shape that's coming up and joining the side of that triangle and that's the shadow it's going underneath that eye. Now here we've got a triangle that's the corner of his eye socket. Now from that triangle we've now got a rectangle that's going up behind that air. Air? air? Hair! With a H. And then we've got this fantastic swoop of hair as well that we can extend the triangle up and this comes right the way up to the 45 line. And this is, here we've got this dark line that comes down. And we've got that patch of hair that's going to come across. Now, here we've got this kind of leaf shape. It's going to come down, we've got the curve of his hair you got that shadow there inside, but we want the curve of the hair and it comes above the 65, pretty much right to the centre. So that comes up there, you've got the point, and then it curves down again. Now here we've got, this hair comes right down past his eye. Again, we can kind of do a triangle. It's a curved kind of triangle. But then we've got another triangle here coming from the 45 on the 105. And this comes up to the 85. You've got a triangle shape there. But that comes down inside and I'm just going to draw a rectangle for that hair that comes down the side of his right eye and his cheek. Now we've got that triangle that goes up. We've got a triangle there going up into the 45. Here we've got... I'm just going to put a rectangle in for that dark patch. And then we've got this curve shape that comes up over the top, past the 85 line, and then comes down to the 105. Then we want just a straight line to the 125. Well, it's just slightly curved. And then we want to, you can see here, we've got a triangle on the 125 to the 185. And that's that shape there. Now don't draw the triangle too hard inside. Now 
where this hair comes down here, we've comes around to the 145, 85. We've got a big oval shape, like a, a big leaf shape. Again, this is going to help when we draw the hair. Now, again, if we draw another curve, like it's just a C shape here, that's going to be that other hair. Now here, coming right the way down to the 105, we've got a D shape that joins up here. Now, we need this triangle to come down underneath. So on this vertical line, the 165, we've got, you can see there, we've just got a D shape. And then inside, we've got another leaf shape that goes up just a bit like a, a crescent you know or a, a slightly straighter banana and that's going to help us with the shape of his hair and the definition of his hair in a little bit and it's rm like i say at the beginning i just kept calling him by the wrong name by his band member and friend anyway so we come down to the ear now what i'm going to do first is on the 145 vertical and horizontal, we've got his little earring. So I'm just going to draw a little oval. And then we've got a little triangle for the bottom of his lobe. And then we've got a D shape for the central part of his inner ear. And so we've got a little D shape and then a second one outside it, which is that more kind of square the outer ear then above it you can see we've got a little triangle that comes up and then I'm just going to draw a parallelogram box shape and that's going to be the back of his head and then one inside and that'll help to place the actual ear when we come and draw the actual curve of his earlobe in and then again right down underneath we can come all the way down the 145 to the 165 just above the 165 line and there we've got a triangle which is the bottom of his hair and a little leaf shape which is that dark patch on his neck and then we want to do this collar and so I've got a rectangle coming down to the below the 205 here and the 145 so I'll put that in first and then you can imagine we've got another triangle shape coming over. So we come down to the 225 and the 125 and we just draw this diagonal line up. And here you can see we've got a triangle and that's the shape of the collar. And again we will rub out those construction lines inside presently when we've got the outline down now we want the top of the collar got a little rectangle there then we've got his hand so here again we've just got this little d shape right on the center line if you use the center line and you think right i just want a d shape using the center line that helps and then we come down for the hand i'm going to come all the way over to past the 65 line and then coming down we've got a rectangle shape for the wrist now we carry that line on and up to below the 165 that's going to be where his thumb is now this thumb, I'm going to put right the way up to, hang on, 165. So his thumb is there below, just that's a check. <laughs> and this is the thing, you're learning to look. You know, it's like, make sure you look and spot where the lines need to go. Because if you put them in the wrong place, it'll be out of position. So here we've got a rectangle for the top part of his thumb and then we want a triangle for the side 
and then going up to where the first knuckle is we've got a triangle on the top if you just draw the line over and then you can just put a, a circle shape you've got a D shape there and that's that first knuckle and then another one as it crosses the center line and that's the second knuckle well it's actually that's the first knuckle second third coming down to the little finger that's folded underneath and they're just using those shapes and the grid lines it helps you build up the outer shape of the hand now we've got the shape of his lips to put in now so we've got a rectangle there that comes it's a triangle really that comes down diagonally and then again a little triangle there that comes below the 165 line and we can just put a little triangle which is going to be that shade or a little rectangle for the corner of his mouth we can bring his lip over and we've got a Again, we've got the edge of his knuckle here coming out now we want a little rectangle going up to the nose here we want a little V shape and then we can just put that curve on for the side of his nose now coming up from the 65 line where we've got his hand coming through if you just think a curve shape coming all the way up through the 125 so it's about a quarter of the way in and we can curve this up right the way up and you can see how we've got this darker line that was already put in because we put this like curved triangle in this kind of shark fin shape and then we want to just curve that around that's a bit of his hair that's coming down the side and here we've got another triangle on this side of his hair again nice little triangle shape coming down now we just want a nice oval from the top imagine this is going to go all the way around so from the 225 this is like the top of his sleeve so we just curving it imagine it goes all the way through so you've got a nice oval shape there then I'm going to come down to the two through the 265 and you can see how that's just going to curve off at the bottom but really it's just a rectangle if we put another curve on here you, you've got the shape of it coming around his wrist again we'll put the other shapes in you can just put simple like a D shape there it's just like a flower if you imagine like you're drawing a daisy or a flower very simple circle in the middle and then you put draw the petals around that's the thickness of this knitting on his jumper on the sleeve of his jumper and it's a bit like a cricket jumper or whether it's a hockey jumper or something in a particular I don't know but it's a very very stylized shape again a little C shape there and that goes around now here we can just bring down a rectangle same again from that one same again from the middle one rectangle coming down as we come to the edge now these are just slightly bent and curved we can draw that arm off on the end now here where the two four five line is you can see we've got a triangle and then you can just draw a line up and you got that that's the crease of the jumper going in now if we draw this line up going up to the 205 that creates that triangle there for us now again if we come up to his cheek and you can see on the 165 it comes below the 25 line here and it's just below the middle line so we just want the top of his shoulder we've just got a line that's going to come off to the side and then we've just got C shape for that white banding again here we've got the 
patterning and the knitting. And we can just see how we've just got a long thin rectangle. And again, we've got a kind of triangle shape there at the top, whereas that curves down. You don't need to put the, the full line over the bottom. And then a second line there, you've got another triangle and we'll fill these in. Again, triangle here within that square and we've got the patterning that we can see on the jumper. Now we want the edge of his face from this hand. So here you can see we've got a triangle caused by his jaw coming up with those squares from the centre line up to the 165 line from his hand. And then again we can just indicate the direction of where his jaw and his cheek is going to go up past his ear. And now we've got the shape. Now we've just got to put in on his left shoulder. So we're going to work from up by the ear. So we've got this shape coming around that forms the collar. And we want the diagonal line coming across there, going through the 145 and off the page. Now, as we come down underneath the collar, you can see we've got a V and it goes right through this cross point here on the 125 245 line. And it's just a V. Comes across to about a third in that square and then the V goes up on that side. And then we can come down and you've got, again, very, very simple V shapes that make that white line. So there you can see we've got three V's, one on top of the other. And then we can draw these lines up in kind of very long, thin rectangles. So that goes up to the 205. And then one goes over. And then we've got a vertical up just to the right of the 165. So we've got that vertical line that that goes up. And here, if you think we've got a D shape for this curve, just, just curve the back of the D though that little bit. We can bring the D round and then we can track it where it comes down to join by the collar between the 225 and 245 lines. And you can see there we've got a V shape again. And as we come down, we've got this inverted V as well. And that comes down right the way down there. And we can just indicate there's going to be another white line there. And then we can draw the thicker bit. And then this line goes up. And then we've got, again, these shapes of his left arm with the creases coming on the jumper here. Now, just very simply, we can see we've got a triangle there. That's that crease. We can just bring this line all the way down to the 265. And then we want coming up through this point here, just draw a kind of circle or any lip shape at the top. We can bring that down to join the point down there. Then we've got the fold and then this comes right away to join down the bottom. And then on the 245 horizontal line, there we've got the highlighted part, but we've got a V that kind of goes off there. So you've got a triangle there going to the edge of the page. And then the shadow shade comes underneath. And so that is using the grid lines and simple shapes to get just a cubist outline so you know that everything's in the right place on your drawing on your page. Now you can just go straight in and start doing the line but by doing this you're actually training yourself up to put the full image down onto the page so that you've got a successful outline to build on top of the shapes and forms that you've actually put down. 
Right, I've just sharpened my 2B pencil. Now we need a piece of paper so I don't smudge everything that I've done so far. And we're now going to put the outline down for RM. Now, I'm going to start with his left eye. So we've got where we've got this rectangle. And we can see right in the centre, we've got a diagonal line coming up. And it comes up just to the right of the centre line. And then we want to curve, curve it down to this corner where his tear duct is. And then we want to put the triangle in for RM's tear duct. Getting his name right now. And then we want this curve coming around for his lower eyelid. Point doesn't seem very sharp. On my pencil and you see how that just comes up just to the right of the center I'm just going to sharpen this again that's better just didn't press it in hard enough and uh, it's just nice to have a sharp pencil so now we can draw the circle of the outer part of his iris. And it's all, it's very, very dark. So you can imagine we've got this kind of highlight here. We've got a reflected light that's coming right the way across his eyeball. There's not a solid pinpoint bit of highlight on the eye like you you know you tend you get like that spotlight it's very soft just a little diagonal now we've got the curve so you can see here we've got this triangle kind of shadow shape that comes off that corner I need to just really push that up a little bit curve that comes around and then we've got a kind of L shape that's that shadow now I'm going to be very very light and if you squint you can see the eyebrow underneath the hair we've got this diagonal just slightly going upwards, it's not horizontal. Curving following the shape of the top of his eye socket as it comes around. And then we've got all of this hair that comes down. So here, right on the 85 line, we've got a little bit of hair that comes down, goes up, and then it breaks and just comes down and we've got like these hair strands that curve down across and through so here right on the 105 center line we've got a big gap and then again there's a gap as this comes across and you've got the hair coming right over to the side and just over his eye the curve of the hair goes up and then we've got this darker patch going right up to the 45 horizontal just to the right of the 85 I can follow that curve around a little bit and here it looks like an arrow you can see we've got 
the top point and then the body of like an arrow pointing up and that's the dark in his hair and then we've got this curve of hair that comes right the way down and then we're going to put in his right eyebrow so we've got this triangle but you can see how it then curves around and we've got the construction line in behind where this hair is going to be again using the 65 vertical we've got a triangle shape there that we can see that comes down and then we've got this darker patch coming off to the side and then that little triangle shape of darker hair another one just above it now if we come down to his right eye I'm going to start with the curve of his iris and we just bring that around and then we want the curve of his eye his upper eyelid goes over the top and then comes down again we've got the box just to the right of the center line then we want the underneath part of his eye curving around and then going up to join that curve and then we've got this really dark triangle right into the corner now here right on the center we've got curve of his tear duct got that little triangle it's a bit like a kind of beak shape you know imagine the profile of a bird and we can just bring that curve up imagine that there's the pupil behind and then we've got this hair that comes down over the top now we're going to come down and do the nostril we've got this V shape in so we can bring it down curves across and then comes up we can see we've got that and then you've got this nice kind of little P you've got a P there Again, I'm drawing this line quite dark. Half, it's about a quarter of the way. So, he says, looking for his putty rubber. Okay, so the clean putty rubber has disappeared. I shall find that presently. So I'm using the kind of old dirty putty rubber. Because I really can't. Now that was there a short while ago. Ah. I have the clean one now. It's fallen behind my off the back of my drawing board. So just want to lighten that up a little bit so that it's not too dark there's the D shape and that comes right the way around underneath his nostril and goes up onto the side and 
And there's the right nostril. And then we want the underside of his right nostril. You see that curves out. We've got the shape and the shadow coming up off the right nostril itself. And then we can bring that highlighted bit and it's like a C shape. And then we can come up and we've got the shape and shadow of his nose. Now it's soft so I'm, I'm not drawing a solid line like I've done on the eyes and the nose. Just indicating lightly where the shape and direction of that shadow is going to go. It's a bit like a leaf shape. Now, same with the shadow coming down from his nose to where his hand is. Now if we start with the first knuckle and we follow the line over, curves over, goes past the 85 line and it comes down and we get the C shape, a little bowl kind of shape. Then we want to curve up and it's just below the 165 line. So we need to just hire where we put that D shape. Just need to hire that knuckle a little bit. There was a little construction line there that I've just gone over. And then it's pretty much on thirds. So it comes down here and again curves out just below the halfway line. Again a little bit higher than the construction line that we put in. Bring the curve down through the 185, comes out and then the side of his, round where his little finger will then tuck underneath, comes down below the 205, just kinks back a little bit and then we've got the curve of the side of his palm, just comes around a little bit and then we can follow the wrist line down into the jumper sleeve. Now we come on the other side we can see here we'll come down from the knuckle and we're going to trace it, the contours down around the shapes that we did and end up like we did on this side finishing up in the sleeve. So again we come off the top of the knuckle, curves over and just comes across diagonally and you've got a V here you can see there's this little V or a tick shape. So that comes down and you get the tick up and then in this box the thumb curves up just below the 165 line. And then it curves around the knuckle of the thumb comes just below the 185. The side of the thumb to the palm curves down a little bit just above and then we've got this shadow part that then comes down and becomes the wrist itself. Now we come down and you've got a little bit of flesh that's just bulged out there. It could be like a little vein uh, popping up on the surface of his skin and then that comes down. Now right at the top we've got the thumbnail and we just draw in that curved shape and you can see how it falls in line with the stripe on his jumper. And then we can just indicate the curve of the knuckle and there you can see we've got shapes really starting to be fleshed out with the outlines. I'm just going to use the side of the pencil 
I'm just going to fill in a little bit of dark in his eyes. And the iris. And straight away you can see we've got RM just starting to look out at us now. Now here we've got the corner of his mouth, the shadow, but we've got the top of his lip that just comes up. And then right on the 165 line here, we've got a little curve. This is the lower part of his upper lip, and then it just curves up above and joins the knuckle. And then you've got the top of the lip behind above that line behind just above that line and then we've got the crease right in the corner and the lower lip comes down now from the 65 vertical in between his thumb and his side of his hand we've got his cheek that comes out and we've got that construction line in and we can just follow that nicely we just go up And you can see how it just curves now between the 145 and the 125 just curves up to be a little bit more vertical and then it curves over again goes behind the hair and we've got that hair down the side now if we come on this side where we've got quite an accurate line that we put in using the grid lines as a shape because it's so light we didn't want to just put lots of boxes in. Now we come up to the 145 line and you can see we've got this nice little curve that joins the lower part of his jaw going up to his cheek and you've got the shape that then comes to the right of the 145 line it comes through a little point and then goes up curves through this horizontal line the 125 and this becomes the inner part of his ear before we do that we're going to do the outer part inside this box so we can see how right on the 165 line and below the 105 horizontal we've got the curve of the upper part of his ear that comes to where his hair is and it curves down in this parallelogram that we made comes down and then the ear comes across to the 145 line right on the point and then we've got the earring We've got that oval, we've got where it goes through his ear, you've got the part, lower part of his earlobe that comes through, and you've got the outer part of the ring. Just draw a little curve shape and then a C curve shape for the inner part of the ring as it goes around the back of his ear. Now, back on the 145 line, we've got this little V shape there. That's the kind of lower part of the entrance to his ear canal. And then we've got this, these 2D shapes. We want to curve that up. And this becomes like a shadow. And again, we've got the darker shadow inside there. And then his ear goes. Let's bring that down a little bit. That's the top part of his ear, it curves to the back and then plummets down. Now, the back of his neck comes out. We've got the curve of the collar.
and this comes down to underneath his hand. And you can see it comes to the 205 line and then just comes underneath and you've got the two bits of his shirt where it joins above the tie. In fact, we didn't actually put the shape of his tie in. Then we can follow this line down out to the V and we come up goes up a little bit further into this square the actual collar itself carries on and that goes up into there and then we've got a bit of the shirt showing because of the jumper that comes down below the 185 and then the jumper goes underneath the collar because this is just over the top top of the jumper comes down into that V and then we can put these cream stripes in Again, just keep looking and you're following and you're tracing where they go through the grid lines just track them as they go up a little bit of a wiggle on this one then that curves over goes to the top curve then you've got this D shape that comes out to the construction line that we had comes down just to the left of the 165 line and then this comes all the way down to the V at the bottom just gets a little bit wider and then that V goes off up there Again, the thicker line. And we follow again the construction line going up. Where it's with the 205 horizontal, it's just to the right of it. So just correct that a little bit. Then it goes out and then kicks back up. And then it curves around up to the shoulder top. And again, we've got a little crease where that then goes and then we can draw that shoulder right the way out now the curve on the outside this comes down we need to come above so here we've got the 225 line this kicks across I just drew a long rectangle but this is how you you correct yourself as you're going just make that a little bit thinner and then we can just follow that shape all the way down now I'm just using the side of the pencil to softly indicate where these creases are again we put the construction lines in so that makes it a lot simpler for us going up into that curve and going up into that V shape now again we've got the actual patterning so we around these crease lines that we've put in there are some extra kind of pattern lines that we can just quickly indicate in and this is the cabling in the jumper Just the pattern so here we've got the cable coming up and then that goes off just some simple quick little lines sharpen the pencil again so we can carry on again this is quite a complex one because of all the patterning in the jumper but we just take time this is the important bit getting your outline down is the most crucial important part so now I'm going to put in this sleeve so here you can see we've got this fantastic shape coming all the way around but because we put these circles in and these construction lines it should make doing the outline really really simple so again here we can see we've just got a V shape 
and then inside there you've got a v-shape you've got a triangle there and you can come and bring the outside line down now this curve comes right the way to the edge and then it just curves down and just off the drawing at the bottom now here we've got the outer part just that nice curve there and it comes to the center line if you just think you can see a W there you've just got a nice W shape and then you've got a thicker line above the top of it and that's going to curve over the top and then here coming across the 85 line you've just got this wide U shape and then just replicate that over the top for the thickness of that cuff of his jumper sleeve and again we've got this U shape wide U shape we can just bring that curve over the top same again going over the 65 line and we've got this one in the dark here High, nice highlighted top but again here now we've got a right angle and that comes down and then that steps out and again here we've got that nice you can see they've got like a kind of owl shape and in fact I'm just looking at that I'm now going to rub that sorry about that but this is how yeah, his wrist actually comes through the centre. The sleeve is in the right place, but the edge of his wrist wasn't. Sorry about that. So we just draw that up. Just needed to move that over that little bit. Awfully sorry. But again, that's why you do the foundation first. But that was a very, very simple correction to sort out. Now we've got the jumper that comes down the sleeve of his cuff. Then we go up into these ribbed sections, the U sections that we had. We've got a nice darker line that comes down. Again, there's some other lines in between, but we'll attend to those as we actually detail the drawing up and we've got this one that starts quite close to the 85 line and it just widens out so the jumper's pulling itself together by the cuff and you can just see as it goes down his wrist how it just widens out a little bit and then these ones just start to curve And that curves down and just crosses the 85 line and then the edge of that one curving all the way down now because we've put that in we can now actually put his tie in because we've missed it and so we can just bring the shape down here because of the stripe you can see we've got a kind of triangle shape a V you've got a nice simple V there going up you know, imagine the triangle going up underneath but we just want to curve that a little bit put the line in underneath and you've got the dark of the tie going off underneath his collar then we can bring that down curve that across that's the stripe on that side and then that's the bottom part and then we, again we just want a nice simple little line indicating and then you've got the little motif little kind of arms legs 
wings kind of like I say just a very simple little motif and you can just place that quite easily inside that square because you've got the tie outline actually in so again now I'm using the flat of the pencil just to indicate these folds going up and that goes off Now we want the shape of this cabling. We can see here that the curve comes around, that goes up, and then we've got again the shape coming down there. A little bit of the cable pattern there, straight line going up. Just to indicate the shape and the patterning. That's that crease in the jumper line. There's that pattern, knitted pattern. Again, we've got this fantastic dark going up there, up by the thumb. Then we want this stripe. You've got the first one, and then you've got the second one of his thumb that goes there from between his thumb and his cheek. And that is most of. I'm just checking like I didn't ever miss the tie. I'm just making sure. Yeah, we've got the edge there, the hair. So everything down here is pretty much in place. Now we just need to finish the hair off. So I'm going to start from this side. I'm just going to curve up. we can see that comes across to a point you've got the hair that comes out down across below the 65 and then the outer edge of his hair at the back you can see curves up and over goes just above the 25 line through the 85 vertical And then we've got where it just dips under and we can just indicate the hair how it naturally flows over you know it's not a flat line so you've got the hair that's actually combed and, and moving over here we've got these curves of his hair coming across this C shape same there, those darker bits and those wisps, and then we've got the hair coming out at the back. That curves across through the 165 line, and then we've got this D shape that we had at the outside. That curves around, comes down to where his ear is, you've got hair coming around the back of his ear, and then comes down and just kind of kicks off by his collar. And then we've got this shadow line caused by his hair here. Now, again, we've got these shadows here. I'm just going to indicate where the shadow is on his cheek. It curves across, goes to the side of his cheek and then curves up inside his eye and again caused by the hair there we've got that shape going up we've got the shadow underneath the hair there a little bit of a triangular shape again the same underneath his lower eyelid on that side And that's our full outline down of Young Cook. Young Cook. I've done it again. RM. It's all right. Again, just off to the left of me, I can see Young Cook staring at me while I'm drawing his bandmate, RM. I will probably be doing this all the way through. I'll probably be drawing 
who knows what and say, oh, there's young Cook. There we go. Anyway, we're now going to rub out all the grid lines and the construction lines. Now, this is a Stettler Mars plastic. It's just the rubber of choice. If you see in my other videos, it's normally bigger than this. But I think I inadvertently threw my large one away in the bin. So I've got some new ones coming. Uh, unfortunately, my wife had a spare one. So I could get this small one to actually do what I need to do now. Anyway, we're now going to erase out or rub out all of the grid lines in the large areas as best I can with this. And then we come in with a tighter one. Now, I'm actually holding the page so I don't get grease off my fingers with the paper that I rest my hand on. And so on some of the earlier drawings that I did for you, I, I actually, when I've rubbed them out, I've left some of the construction lines in like, so I've only gone around the edge of the head like this. Not right to the edge of the page. So I've done that so you can still see them. So you know it's from a how to draw video. And I then fixed, used spray fixative. And you cannot rub out the lines once it's been fixed. The fixative is brilliant. When I was an art student many years ago, BC, before cyberspace, before there was any YouTube, uh, for drawings and pastel drawings, we used hairspray as a cheap alternative to fixative, but it didn't actually fix. Now, I can't remember what fixative was like back then, but I can, the, the stuff that is available now, if you've got it, is brilliant. I don't mind using it, but if I can, I don't spray fix stuff. It's better if it gets framed and, uh, again, the archival quality of the fixative, we don't know what it's like. Now I'm inside the hand, you know, I've just done all around the outside, doing as much inside the hair as I can. But again, this is quite big and chunky, so you can't be uh, very detailed, like in between these lines, not a chance. So the thicker ones, that fits, but there's no way, I'm going to lose all the construction line that I actually drew the outline so this is why you have if you're fortunate enough a variety of erasers there, so we've got a lot of that out down across the bottom And in those wider parts, again, back into the hand. I can use this paper now because I'm not right close to the edge and I can really press on to stop my drawing from disappearing. And again, I draw these lines on, the grid lines fairly dark so that you can see them. You can draw them on really lightly. So I've done as much as I probably can with that. Even if I was using the bigger one, I'd, I'd only be able to get to that kind of level. Now, I have a piece of card. You can use a piece of paper. And now I just have a brush. And I just sweep these off carefully. Oh, look who's appearing. Get his name right this time. It's RM, Rap Monster. There we go. Now, there are still 
I'm going to sweep them onto the card and then I can put them in the bin much easier. There are still lots of lines. Now again, this is my, this is the same rubber, it's a Mars plastic, but in a kind of pen holder. And this allows me now to get really close in so that I don't actually lose too much of my drawing outline and construction lines. See that one I could have done with the big rubber, but here it's just getting a little bit close. You can see it just like using a pen or a pencil you can be quite quick see even inside this ear and you can get erasers even thinner than this which is amazing like when when I was a student again I keep joking BC before cyberspace yes I am that old I have uh, for all you wonderful folks in India, I did, as a teenager, used to play cricket uh, and enjoy cricket. And uh, back in the day, many, many moons ago, because I've been asked to draw some cricketers. But in the modern game, I don't know how too many cricketers are. Uh, but again, sports stars are on the future possible to-do list. At the moment, I have a shed load of movie folks and Korean pop stars and other pop stars to do. Uh, but I was saying back, way back, I'm just cleaning this off on my jeans. It's getting very dirty. Is that there? That big dirty bit on the neck. But I can get quite close. As I was saying, when I was a young student, you didn't actually have rubbers like this, so you'd, you'd only get big ones. And what you'd have to do is you'd, you'd actually cut them. And I can remember when I first got a putty rubber. I didn't even know, knew they existed till uh, I went to my local art store. It was called Webley's back then. And I think I got one from there. Uh, just read about one in a book or, or an art magazine or something. It was like, oh, fancy trying one of those. And it was about six seven miles so you're talking 10 to 12 kilometers from where i lived to the art store and i would walk there so i've just lost one of my construction lines because i just rubbed it out so but i would walk there because the bus fare meant i could have more art materials and that's the joy that's part of my memories of growing up and it was also not just a art store and station as it was also a printing works and it was Webley's where my parents if we did catch the bus there they bought off cuts of paper for me to draw on because it was so much cheaper than buying an art pad and I was only a child so I wouldn't know what cartridge paper was or anything else like that or Bristol board or you know the, the what it was just amazing because you just got all of this paper I could then draw on. So hopefully we've now got most of these lines off. And then I'm going to use my very happy toy just for the last bit. So I'm just brushing these off again. Right, now, you can get a stick one like this, even fine, but I've got it in an electric eraser, which is brilliant, because it does all the work for you. So like right in the eye there, I could get rid of it. Inside the nose, the nostril, it's just absolutely brilliant. So even now, because his skin is so light above his upper lip I can very carefully remove all of those construction lines 
but with great accuracy. And we've got that one right in the middle of his hand, down by the edge. Again, just in his hair, because his hair is so light, if he's got dark hair, I probably wouldn't take out so many of these. Again, on his neck, right by his cheek. But that is Rap Monster construction lines cleaned out. There we go. Just some last little bits. I can do these with a rubber, not the electric one. Right at the bottom. Because I just don't need those on. Now that is your foundation part actually done he says missing a complete horizontal line in a light bit so that needed to come off but he says that is your foundation done and we've got the outline down completely <laughs> on rm that's absolutely fantastic now we can start shading it in So we're still using the 2B pencil <clears throat> and now I'm going to come in <clears throat> and very lightly I'm going to shade in, I'm actually going to draw the top of that ear in again, Got a little diagonal there as well, but we're going to very very carefully shade in a lot of tone. In fact, I'm going to do it vertically. In fact, I'm just going to redraw in that line just to make that work. In fact, you just you just do it in shapes. Like I say, I'm now going to do it from the top because the lightest part is here on RM's hand. Didn't say Young Cook that time. And so I'm just putting a tone all the way across. I'm like coming down and I'm just filling the shapes in. So above his eye, actually in the eye. There's no solid highlight, bright highlight on that right eye. So we can just fill that in. And I'm just very gently, pretty much I'm holding it very gently at the end of the pencil with the tips of my fingers and just bouncing it backwards and forwards. I'm actually resting my hand on my other hand on top of and that helps me to pivot. much freer but still have a element of control so now just coming up is filling in where the nose is now we want this big space across the cheek And it just gives a good keyed area to actually start building up the tones of the flesh. But by putting just a, a quick lighter tone in, you 
you've got a base to then work from. This is how like artists will use tone canvas and sometimes portrait artists will use a grey piece of paper and do the work with a pencil or charcoal and then work with white chalk or crayon on top. Again, the hand, now I'm being very light. But I'm not moving the pencil round just so as it's got a flat part and it's just filling in really, really lightly. Now again, light on the collar very very quick and then we've got these cream stripes now I'm trying to do this really quick so that you've got a good direction in which to work with your drawings Whereas if you want to do this hyper real, you could use a 2H pencil and fill it in really slowly, building the tones up. Now again, I'm going to do the same in the hair before I actually smudge it. But because it's hair, I am drawing even, because like you could, it's going to be smoothed out, but you could draw in any direction on the hair but because of the flow of hair I'm actually going to draw in the direction that the hair is actually growing and being brushed and styled on RM. You can see we've got that darker area there at the back curving around. Now we've got light coming over the front. Light as it just curves over the front right of his forehead. And then slightly darker coming down the right hand side. Now this is just something that I like doing. So I just get a piece of kitchen roll and I just like to smooth, especially on the skin, this first layer down. It's just something I like doing, it gives me a good base to then work from. But it just smooths all of the pencil down. Now again, in his ear there was a lot of lines and you can see that's a little bit darker. But you can just push the pencil around with the kitchen roll and actually make some areas darker than others. So here on his wrist and the side of his thumb then down the side of his neck, underneath the nose, side of the nose, again just smoothing this over I've actually toned in his left eye as well now. And the right eye that's going to be much darker Again, I'm not smoothing as much in the hair, but I'm just pushing it in the direction that the hair actually has grown. And you can see already that we've got a little bit more form already on RM's face. Now, get my paper so as I don't smudge with my hand and again we're still using the 2B pencil and 
you can see here now on his eye also using the old dirtier putter, putty rubber and just pulling up some of the highlights in the hair again just pull it to a nice fine point because his hair is so light I'm just doing this now so that I don't lose where I need that detail to be so here we've got this C curve on the left hand side of his head And then I've just noticed I'm just pushing a bit of tone down on the hair at the back and the highlight in the parting where that crosses the top of his head and then where that comes down the side so already that's starting to give us a little bit more definition so we've got the highlights and we've got some tone down actually on the paper now what we want to do is just bring a little bit more detail in so I'm using the 2B pencil and we're going to do RM's left eye got his name right again still have his friend looking at me off camera so not too dark coming down to the tear duct you know not as black as up here come right down into that corner let me leave that highlight just showing now got the curve underneath so I'm going to use the curve of my hand just so that it's easier to do rather than working upwards if you use the natural curve of your hand then it just allows you to get a nice curve but again I'm being very careful and light that curves up and you've got that dark into the corner we've got this highlight this hair it just kind of gives it a little break right to that corner where the fold in the corner of his eye causes this dark crease coming off And we can just build that shadow up on that corner now again we've got this highlight coming across his eyeball so I'm just being careful to not be too dark I'm just using this 2B pencil just to indicate the detail that we need at first darkening in the iris a little bit now the bit over the top is much darker so I'm going to come in with he says there it is I'm going to sharpen it as well my 4B pencil Now 4B means you can get darks easier, B is black, it's just softer and so 8B you can get it softer still and it'll wear down very very quickly. I 
and done right up to the iris on the under part of his upper eyelid underneath that reflected highlight bit and then a little bit darker to the edge on his iris again right in the corner but softly just filling that dark in on the crease now coming back in with a 2b pencil can fill in a little bit on that reflection then we've got a darker shadow on the top of the eyeball coming down to join the corner and the crease in his eye and then we want a shadow right down by the side of his eyeball to his tear duct now just above his eye you got the fold of his skin underneath the hair now I'm just indicating carefully the shadow but trying to leave some elements of the highlighted hair showing you can see just coming down above the line of the upper eyelid so we can put the full line in and you've got that highlight showing but then I'm just going to try and just indicate some shadow lines and tone while still leaving some hair lines going up but again we can pull those back in using the putty rubber and there straight away we have one of RM's eyes staring out at us again underneath at the bottom just gently And coming off this corner, just building up some of this tone. Such stylized portraits these are. Again, it's just fantastic. You're learning tonal techniques that will help you in future drawings. And again, just seeing this being actually done helps. So there you can see that eye is just starting to look far more three dimensional straight away. We just need some little bit of darker in between the hairs. And the actual edges of his eye and around his tear duct. Again, we can pop some highlights on there as well using the putty rubber in a little bit. Now, this one is quite complex because he's got so much hair covering the eye. So, again, I'm going to start with 2B pencil and we're doing the upper part of his eye coming right down to the corner and then you've got the lower part of his eyelid that comes to the tear duct again I'm just going to use the natural curve of my hand We've got hair coming right the way across his eye here. So I'm just doing some vertical lines to try and leave as much of the hair showing as possible. Just indicate the edge of the iris. It's very dark there. And 
and then the tear duct is quite dark, this little kind of beak shape at the end. Now again, darken the eyeball down. And then going off into the corner, we can darken that down as well. Now that looks a bit strange because we haven't got the dark in on his iris. So here, we're just darkening the iris down. And still trying to show some of the hair. Again, dark right at the top. A little bit light and this is with the 4B pencil because it's just easier to make those darks quicker. Now softly darkening that upper eyelid down over the eyeball but already that's looking really really nice. So again coming back in with the 2B pencil I'm just feathering some shadow into the corner from his nose up into the eyes, upper part of his eye socket. And the same thing, we want this tone line, just leaving a little bit of highlight over the top of his eye that comes over. But then going up into this corner, we want a nice triangle of tone. But just doing it softly means we can then indicate the hairs when we come in with the putty rubber. Now, right on this corner, we want this lovely dark shadow, like here where he's got this corner part coming off. Got to increase that coming down underneath. And then we want the crease underneath his lower right eye. And there already you can see we've now got two eyes starting to really look out at us. And I do quite like doing the eyes first, not for any other reason than it's just something for you to, you know, pun intended, focus on, especially in the video, because you've got something that you can actually connect with. But you can start with the ear, you, you can start up in this corner and work away, or you can start with the jumper and build up. It's, it's completely, as you develop your portrait skills, up to you. So now here we can see we come down and we want to increase the tone on the nose coming up off the nostril got that tone going up that joins there and then we've got the shape you got this lovely highlighted shape on his right nostril it's just that C shape. Again, I'm being very soft, no hard lines, just building the tones up lightly with the top of the pencil. And you can see that in line with the tear duct, you've got this dark crease in this corner here. That's going to go up and join up there. And already, We've got RM starting to look three-dimensional for us. Again, I'm just going to quickly, because I've got the flat of the pencil feather in this tone now, you've got this shape coming down off his nose to the right-hand side of his upper lip. And then 
we did kind of lose the construction line a little bit but you can see going up to the cheek all the tone on his right hand side of his cheek and I'm just filling it in softly and gently because it's easier to add tone than it is to take it away so again I'm now adding a little bit more tone which is the curve of his lower cheek off from his lip and the curve of the right of his cheek going up underneath his eye and you've got this kind of little highlighted point here now underneath the hair in this V it's very dark much darker than I'm doing now but I'm just putting in a quick tonal marker come down above the eye and again just fill in some of that tone now again coming off the eye in between the nose and the two you've got this little shape here over the top of the nose it curves over and you've got this tone between the two eyebrows Now we can fill in going down to the side, this curve coming round. And that's actually quite lovely. You know, you've got really soft light and we've got to be very careful as we develop more of the tone around his face. So here quickly, I'm just going to indicate that shadow on the lip and even just a little bit in his nostril between the top lip, that shadow on the top lip and then the curve going up so now just filled in a little bit on his lips and we've got the light, because the light is kind of coming down this direction can see we've got a lighted bit down his cheek here and here so now again like we did at the beginning I'm just quickly filling in this tone across his cheek and then coming across underneath his eye down to his nose just again being careful now on the top of his nose coming down to the underneath part how that curves across and the lower part of his cheek and that's starting to look really good again we're going to build up more tone because we've got the hand and the ear and the neck and then more in the hair but that's looking good so far now we're going to put in more tone around the ear, the neck and the hand and in the hair I'm just going to build that off but also one of the things that's interesting is we haven't put any eyebrows in yet so what I'm going to do is start with the eyebrows now we can see we've got the eyebrows showing through the hair so I'm using the flat of the pencil so right above the center of his eye his left eye we've got this darker line coming up and this is kind of reverse drawing you're working backwards to kind of create the hair in a sense and so effectively drawing these lines very gently 
is actually drawing the skin underneath. We're not drawing the hair as you would do on someone with darker hair. So we're actually drawing the skin. So you fill that up. And again, I'm going to use the older putty rubber. And it just allows me to gently pull that hair back in. And this is how you've got to build it up and you've got to build it up quite carefully. Now, again, I'm trying to do this as quick as I can, but I don't want to take forever and ever and ever. So we've just got to be careful, but you can take your time on this and you know, I don't want to be uploading a nine hour video, you know, the longest one so far has been four and a bit hours. And like I say, I don't mind, I don't set out with thinking, all oh, right, I've got to do this in such and such a time. But it does help to, you know, get it done in a, in a, in a decent amount of time. But this working in kind of reverse is a little bit more complex but all you're doing exactly the same as you're doing anywhere else is you're just working with tones and shapes and so you carefully put down the the darker bits and elements and that then helps to create the effect of the hair over his eyebrow. So already you can see there we've got the eyebrow just starting to take shape and form behind the hair that's on the front of his fringe coming down over his eye. So again now we've got these slightly darker areas around here. So I'm just using the flat of the pencil to create a nice darker tonal area. But because it's the flat of the pencil, it's just resting on the, the top of the paper. We can then come in and use the putty rubber to create the highlights that we want. So again here we've got this darker part in between his hair coming down. Now if I do use the very tip of the pencil to create, you can barely, you probably can't even see this, you can hear it on the paper, but it, it, it's creating some very, very faint, sharper lines. And that's kind of what we're after. And then you just come in with the putty rubber. And it just pulls off. Now you can use uh, paint or some kind of pencil crayon or something like that or a pastel pencil and you can draw the highlighted bits on on top if you want. But I'm just trying to help you with basic drawing techniques. So again, th these bits here. Over that nice tone, you can just indicate quickly those wispy lighter hairlines and again right down over his eye and you can just see that we've got that
shape and form of the hair starting to appear again over that tone there. Now that was the 4B pencil picked it up by mistake using the flat of the 2B again just bringing that triangle of darker tone right up to where the hair comes down a little bit in between and then the same thing as we come through We've got these darker parts but we've got little hairs going over the top that make the tone a little bit lighter now again just doing it like this very carefully but quickly it's impressionistic now again I'm just using the very tip of the pencil in right over his eye to indicate some of the lines of this hair coming down from his fringe on the right hand side and they do come right down over his eye again it's very dark up in this top part So now I'm just back in with the putty rubber. And just following the flow and curve of the hair. As that comes down over his eye. Now even in this bit up on the top, we've got some wispy little hair. So I'm just indicating those before we put the much darker part in and there you can see we've got a good indication of RM's eyebrows in and his face really starting to come together so now we need to build the tone up all around the rest of his face his ear and his hand so again, using the flat of the pencil, we've got that top part as it curves over. It's kind of darker on the top caused by the hair above. Just indicate little bits in the hair. Then we've got the crease of the ear into the upper part. So you've got dark right underneath the crease. We've got this lovely V shape here. It's bringing the tone off a bit. And this comes down. Curves across. Then we've got on the earlobe at the bottom. slightly darker tone at the bottom of it where it goes to the earring and you've got a little highlighted bit here so you just draw above the top and then you've got this D shape into the entrance to his ear canal and then that little V in the corner and it's darker got a nice little dark part up there where it curves over again that V there you got a little V of shade I mean just increase the tone inside the ear now down on the neck got a little bit on the back of the neck and you got a little highlight here 
as it comes around. But we just need to darken his neck as it comes around underneath his chin. You know, it's darker than it is on the side of his cheek. Now again, I'm using the flat side of the pencil just so as it can fill that tone in really quickly and nicely. And if you squint, you can kind of see where the extra tone needs to be. So down by the collar here, and then a little passage going up the neck, and then right underneath his chin down to his hand. Again, just coming down the side of his cheek. And where his mouth is, he's got that darker bit on the corner of his mouth. And then you can see here, just coming off by the top of his eye and away from the hair, you've got this curve of tone just coming down and around, down his cheek towards his mouth. And you've got a little highlighted bit here. And then underneath the left eye, coming down the nose. Up the side of the nose, you can see we've got a stronger highlight here, but we've got a vertical line. Then underneath the nose, the V in between the two nostrils. Now, we can now come onto the hand. down the side of the hand to where the palm joins the wrist. Off this knuckle, just a line of very light tone coming down. The same off the second knuckle. In between the second and first knuckle. And then this kind of triangle from the first knuckle down to the thumb again just very light just filling it in nice and lightly and then the thumb is slightly darker including the nail and there already you can see we're getting more three-dimensionality. So now we've got the back of RM's wrist going down towards the jumper cuff and then a nice shadow right where it goes into the cuff. Up the left hand side. Now I've got just filling in very carefully the line where his wrist was too close in. So I've just filled that in. Now up the side of the thumb we've got that darker shadow. And going up all the way up to the nail. A little bit of a Slightly darker tone. Now, I'm going to come in and I'm going to use the 4B pencil, but gently, so as I've got soft edges, putting in RM's left nostril.
Then we come under and then we've got the right nostril. So we've got this nice kind of curved shape and then we've got this long thin just diagonal going up. And then we've got the darker tone coming around the side of the nose. Again, the 4B is just softer, so you've got a little bit more control in adding the dark onto the skin. You can see already it's really starting to look nice and soft and three-dimensional. Now, we've got the edge of his mouth behind his hand. And we want the dark in between the lips. So we've got this nice curve shape that we've got going up into the corner. Again, I'm using the soft side of the pencil very dark right in between the top and bottom lips but then softening it so as we haven't got a sharp edge like we have around the eyes dark tone on the lower bottom lip got a dark edge right next to that front knuckle I'm just filling the tone in carefully on the lips. And we've got this corner part, a little bit of shadow. And then we've got kind of three little highlights in the creases in the lip. Now, I'm going to use the 4B pencil to create that shadow in between the centre of his upper lip and the nose. And then we've got the shadow coming down the right hand side of his upper lip from his actual nose. It is much darker. There already you can see we're getting much nicer tonality and three-dimensional form. So now we need to do the same up the side of RM's cheek. Just bringing the tone to a darker state. And we can see here now just building that out softly and quickly. You're just letting the flat of the pencil do the work. And you're just increasing the tone. And it's it's just it's actually very, very soothing to do this. We can bring this all the way up the side of his face. And you can see how from the corner of his eye it comes down and joins. And you get this much darker line going to the edge but it's just soft then we can build this tone up just carefully and quickly And you just keep looking at your reference and just adding a little bit more to just build up that tone as we come across. And 
And again, you can see we've got this highlighted part here in the center of the cheek. So we just want to vignette the tone around it, just making it slightly darker. And because you're using the 4B, the softer pencil, it's just easier to put a nicer, softer area of tone down. So here, right next to the eye up in that corner. And you can see now that, like I say, that's really looking like a nice three-dimensional face. Now, I'm actually going to use a brush. And because his tones are so light, I don't think, I did mention I was thinking of doing this on Young Cook, but I don't think I did in the end. And you can use a brush to just soften the tones. I might have done it, I just can't remember. I know that I did use it on uh, Ariana Grande in the Portraits playlist. And you can use a brush, and you, you'll see it in the time lapse I did of Emma Coleman. And it just allows you to literally just brush the graphite around. And you create lovely soft transitions. And it is literally like adding makeup. And you can see there that's so soft and lovely. And so you can see I'm now just brushing that darker part that we put in, in and around and under his eye. And you've just got so much more control. Just wiping it on the kitchen towel. But even when you're brushing over these bits where I've used the putty rubber to keep the hair out, you still see the actual hair eraser marks that you put in. So now this bit around by his nose. Just able to soften it with much more control using the brush than you can with a piece of kitchen towel or something else. I think I use the cotton bud as well on Ariana Grande. I say you can you can do that. You can use a cotton bud, but that does get very dirty. So yes, even though, and I do wash this sometimes, even though you do get a dirty brush, you can wash it out and clean it up. It just gives you so much more fantastic control. So you can see here now coming across this cheek, it's leaving that highlighted part above and below. And Young Cook's looking really, really good. So now I'm just totally softening the neck. And I've, I use different brushes as well. I've got uh, a kind of stiffer one. And uh, so again, for the neck here where I don't need as much control and on the ear, you can soften very, very quickly. So again, on the hand, I'm actually getting the transitions in that I need very quickly. And this is exactly the same as using uh, a blending stump. But again, it's just using artist techniques. It's absolutely fantastic. And I heartily recommend it. <laughs> See, I've just now developed that tone. Again, softening off there, using the chisel edge of that brush. 
just makes it absolutely simple again under his eye and he says it's just like doing makeup that looks fantastic i hope you're enjoying this i'm having a blast now back in with the 2b pencil and we're now going to get in as much of the other tones in as we possibly can quite quickly so we've got the edge of this jumper that's coming down here around the collar yeah i'm just whacking a little bit of tone in quickly and this is going to be quite dark down here this is the underneath his shirt that's very dark actually so just indicating this quick and you can see this in fact that needs to go like that that's the edge of the tie because the hand needs to stand oh actually there's a bit of his collar going over that's rather interesting isn't it right next to the hand we can just highlight that up a little bit Curve the tie up. Now I'm just using the 2B pencil. I'm using the flat of it now. Again, I'm squinting my eyes to see where the bigger shapes are. So here we've got a V. A little dark, or a kind of leaf shape of dark there, and then there's a little V shape there. But you see I'm still drawing in the direction that the hair is actually coming down and then we've got this color coming up the back and again you can see there's like little colors and tints in his hair he's got this, this bleached purpley white but there's also peachy colors in there that would be amazing to paint and if you wonder why I, lo I love using the pencil, is it's where everything starts. It literally is where everything starts. Learn to use a pencil and then you can develop your artistic skills every, in every other area that you want to. So here, coming off the top of his head at the back... We've got the shadows underneath, the lighter parts of his hair. And then we've got some real dark bits just there and there. A couple of little darker points. Again, coming up into this light a bit in his hair. And where we had this arrow earlier, we can now really just darken some of those areas in. But again, just filling shapes in because we've got the hair going across it. And again, just above. You see already we've got really lovely shape appearing in RM's hair, making his head more three-dimensional. So again, down this side now. I'm just 
indicating these darker parts. On the right hand side of his head. Again, I'm just being impressionistic with the mark making, making large covering areas of tone. You can see already we've now got much more definition. So now I'm coming in and using the tip of the pencil. And that's giving us indication of hair lines in the darker areas. And that's it's it's much easier in the darker areas to do this. Because you can just attack it really quickly. But when you get to the lighter areas, you can still do the same thing but you've just got to be a little bit lighter. You can still hear the pencil scratching, but you just need to be a little bit lighter. And you can even use a 2H pencil if you want. Again, if I just come in with a 2H pencil, you're not going to get dark lines. You can probably barely see these lines at all but they're there and they help give the definition that you need. Because it's giving you the kind of shadows between the strands that you actually need. For the hair definition. But again, you go in the direction of the hair. And that and it's just using grades. You can do this with a 2B, but it is soft and it will disappear. And this is why using different grades of pencil means you get more variety of marks and tones and techniques than just by using one or two simple grades. Now, in my full drawings that I do, I use five pencils. I use mainly 2B and 4B and 8B. I use a 2H, but I also use a 6H. Because it just gives me the variety that I need. Now, I don't need a 3B or a 5B, because between 2 and 4B, I can use the two pencils to get what I need. So there you can see, I mean, even now you can see straight away, we've actually got, again, I'm just using the putty rubber just to pull in some lines, just some hair lines as we come down into the dark area. Now, right on the corner of his cheek here, we have got a highlight that comes up inside that hair. And it just gives us more natural looking hair falling around someone's head. And you just come back in and rework it with your pencil afterwards. It's like you've got two very highlighted bits here, but we'll just come back in with a pencil and that'll darken down. Come back 
coming up over the front and the left side of his head. Again, you can see that really nice, bright, sharp highlight. Highlight on the back of his ear. Again, just just indicating hair is absolutely fantastic. That's looking that's looking really really nice. So now I'm coming in with a two B pencil. And these highlighted bits you can indicate some of the darker lines. <laughs> Again, here coming up next to his eyebrow. And you just feel where we pulled off a lot of those highlights. We've now got those nicely darker toned areas but we've got lines within them that represent the hair so now I'm going to come in with a 4B because we've got this fantastic darker area right in the top part in between his parting of his forehead And just being careful and then softening the edges and bringing that tone down. This is where you just increase the value and the darkness in your tones to make your drawing more realistic. But you do it by building it up slowly. And not by going in too deeply, too quickly. So there now you can see that eye is really starting to be framed and looking more three-dimensional and realistic. Because the tones all around it are working in our favour. So now we've got that dark edge coming down his cheek. all the way down to the hand. So I've just gone over onto the hand a little bit, but this is fine because it's a very highlighted part. You can just pull that off very carefully and quickly because you are using the soft part of the pencil. It's not pressing into the paper so that it's irreversible when you do something like that that quickly. And you can, if you want to, you can actually leave those lines that cross over. It just depends what kind of effect you're after. So now I'm just building this tone up, coming up the side of his face. And you've still got, you've got a reflected highlight. So you want it slightly darker inside and then right on the edge you can just increase that dark and again right up the side of his head into the hair dark 
darken down those little bits in his eyebrow. That's actually looking really lovely. Darkening the nostril down, the inner parts. And then these bits around the right nostril. Going up the side of his nose. And coming under the eye. And then this part coming down. From the right hand side of his lip. Got a darker shadow next to the hand. And it kind of goes up and it's lighter in the middle. And then becomes darker underneath the nostril. And then half the nostrils a little bit dark underneath and the same in the center part of his nose just darken that a little bit and the edge there and here we've got the shadow caused by his hair going up over the side of his nose between the eyebrows filling in this bit here and then across his forehead again I'm now just filling this tone in on his cheek carefully so as we leave the highlight in the center now if I come down on his hand round to the thumb the edge of the thumb and when we quickly put the jumper in that'll build and add loads of stability for the tone that we've already put on so now I'm carefully going to fill in the shadow on the back of his neck right down by his collar again I'm using the soft part of the end of the 4B pencil so that I'm not getting a solid crisp line but we're still getting the nice dark tone with a soft edge created by the collar on his shirt just onto his neck and there that's looking really really lovely so now I'm just coming in with the brush again just to soften these transitions that we've just put on on the right hand side of his face you can see that's really soft and warm now again the same 
up into the top just soften over that bit that we just put in on his wrist and the side of his thumb And this is brilliant because you can actually fill in quite a large area just using that. Oops, blimey, that's just fallen out of me. I don't know where this one came from, but it's, it's just... It's not my usual blending stump. Now, because of what's going on under this hair at the top, I'm going to use this blending stump just to push some of this pencil around and again because of the flatter nature of the actual blending stump itself at the end you can flatten it quite quickly it lends itself to these shadows in the hair but again I'm drawing in the direction of the hair. Somebody left a comment before I started doing this. I answered a comment and they were asking, I mean, it might have been, yes, like I say, somebody just said, oh, can I do, they're really struggling with hair, can I do hair tutorials? And I said, well, in every portrait, there's a hair tutorial, unless they're bald. You know, Voldemort, no hair tutorial. So, this is how you develop your hair skills but you use it in exactly the same way as a pencil and it allows you to draw hair like I say that's just I mean straight away that's given us a really lovely softer effect tonally that we're after in the hair and again even on this forehead I'm now carefully bringing the tone down to the highlight above the right eyebrow just leaving that little lighted bit Again, even around and under the eyebrow. Using the blending stump gives me the transitions I want. But because you did the foundation work earlier, you've still got that effect of the hair going over his eyes. Now again, just like the brush, now underneath the neck I'm increasing the tone where the shadow is created by his hand and his jawline and then the curve the natural curve of the neck You know, dark a bit at the back and then the highlight going up and the shadow underneath where the ring is in his ear. Again, these darker tonal bits in and around his ear, in the hair. Again, these bits of hair at the back. Need a 2B pencil. Just to add some tonal bits in that hair. Now, we're really starting to get somewhere.
now I'm going to we are really going to whack in a lot of tone very quickly so I'm just using this blending stump now I can use because it's picked up some pencil from elsewhere I can use this for the tonal lines so coming around this collar here at the back I'm just lightly push it on and we've got a nice lighter tone now I did put some lighter pencil down just by using the edge of the blending stump you get that kind of soft effect that's in that white cotton shirt he says getting a really dirty bit but that's why we have erasers Now, we've got the cream bits in the jumper. Again, I'm now just indicating that really quickly. You've got some ribbing in the jumper, so I'm just indicating that nice and quickly too. darker where the jumper is again this bit underneath his chin and then coming out from underneath the thumb that's absolutely fine now I'm going to come in with the 4B pencil and I'm going to quickly whack in the jumper he says but this is going to have to be quickly now I'm using the side now like I did on young cook making sure we are going well with this I'm not going to go for a highly detailed jumper so we're giving an impression so just like the hair We're just trying to give the impression of how this jumper is knitted and so you can use the flat side of the pencil to give the indication of the way that it's knitted and the 4B being really soft means that you get some really nice wide flat strokes but again you just need to be a little bit careful so you don't go too far over into the cream bands but that's not a major problem so I'm getting a bit lighter there you can see here now we've got a couple of darker patches and we can just indicate those slightly darker lines at regular intervals but then 
coming down the jumper here now we've got all these vertical lines and these darker areas where the jumper folds and I'm just going to be really loose and arty just to fill in the tone really quickly and you can see already that looks really lovely and nice just a little bit arty rather than going for the detail on the top now this is just artistic techniques that you can use so I'm doing the, the ribbing going through the cream but going all the way through all of the area up to the V on the neck of the jumper and you just put little lines on that make you happy <laughs> it says it's just you can look and choose exactly how much or how little you want to actually put on so now I'm just quickly filling all of this area in a <laughs> bit of putty rubber there using the side of the pencil and it just looks lovely and quick and dynamic but you've filled in the area and it starts to frame RM's head now again using the side of the blending stump if you want you can fill all of the areas in on the green stripes but you've still got the effect of the pencil lines that you've already put in now again you can fill right the way up to the top because there's no clean paper showing through so you filled all of that tone in really quickly now we've got the dark here right underneath the collar got a curve and then it's a little bit darker underneath but the right dark edge and then we've got this tie that's dark right on the edges but we've got a tone just inside plus the lighter stripes and the logo so we can just crisp up around the stripes darken right to the edge and the same in right underneath underneath the edge of the collar it's darker right on this side because this is inside where the shadow is now we've got a little bit of tone on the center you need to be careful around the logo just try and leave that showing again if you go really quickly and take your time not a problem at all and darker caused by the collar just make sure that the transitions are consistent there 
Clean up the darkness coming down on there. And again, right in the corner of the jumper where his arm meets his chest. We've got these darker parts as well. Again, we can just build the tone up carefully and slowly. But with being impressionistic, it just looks, you know, a bit looser. It just looks really, really lovely. Again, this is just having a bit of arty fun, really. I'm just indicating the ribbing on the jumper again. And you can come back in with your putty rubber if you want. Again, if you squint, you can kind of see where there's darker areas coming down. And you're just using your cross hatching to just build it up. Now, if I do just come in with the putty rubber up on the top, especially on these cream bits, just indicate some little highlighted areas. There, that's now on that side, that's absolutely fantastic. We do the same on this side. It's going to look stunning. So, again, I just sharpen the pencil. I'm being very careful so I don't snap the tip off like I normally do. I'm just filling in. In fact, one thing I have just noticed, but we'll do this in a moment. I'll come back to that. Is we've got the dark because we need to get this jumper in relatively quickly. Now we've got Oh, there goes the end. It was a really fine point and I am using the flat of the pencil. So we've got these dark ribbed bits inside. The thing that I did notice that I haven't, this, this is very bright. It needs just toning down the logo uh, in on RM's tie. So we can bring this ribbing down. And we've got this incredible dark creases going off in the jumper and again I'm just filling in this tone now relatively quickly we've got the dark right underneath the thumb Again, as soon as you put the dark in, you can see that reflected highlight, which is lovely. Down by the side of his wrist. There's a little bit of shadow in that ribbing. Then we come up. We've got the dark right underneath his cheek that actually causes a dark going up the side of his cheek as well and then the ribbing of the jumper now I'm getting, being very careful because I am right next to his cheek And I don't want to go over his cheek because we want the face to be spot on. Again, you can see now just bringing that darker line up the side of his cheek from the bit that we've just toned in. Now, filling the jumper in, again, the sleeves have got little verticals, a couple of little verticals 
in between. Now it's lighter here and around the top. I'm following those little U shapes that we made, indicating the jumper and we're going to come in with the putty rubber and it will make it stand out. Now, because we've put the verticals on, if we just go sideways like that, filling it in, it actually looks really good and full. Now, I'm going to come in, I'm just going to push that pencil around so as we've got no white showing. But then we can increase the darks. in the center part of the ribbing in the pattern and again the same coming up onto the top I'm just filling in very quickly using the direction of the pencil lines to just very loosely indicate the patterning on his jumper so we'll just smudge this in quick you can see that's getting very dirty and that so far is looking really good we're going to be on to final details soon, but that's looking fantastic so far. We need to increase the highlights on here. And in fact, I'll just look this. Oh dear. There it goes. Just going to use the smudging tool and we get the tone on that. Absolutely fantastic. Now I'm just quickly going to ping up those highlights and then we can see the top of his jumper is looking really good now now we're going to detail up around this ear you see we've got the shadow I'm using the 2B pencil and we've got the shadow in the crease coming down the curve coming up and we've got around the actual ear itself and we've got the hair behind so that's a little bit darker now coming over the top again we've got some hairs that are coming over but we've got this triangle of dark and then some darker bits above and the 2B is just a little bit harder than the 4B so we can actually get some better definition on the actual tones that we need in these gaps in between the hair so again we've got the dark little bit in that corner of that ear and then the shadow caused by the hair right on top of the ear comes right the way over just leave that little highlight on the edge of the ear coming out again we can darken down in this D shape here in the entrance to the inner part of his ear 
and then this little corner down the bottom and a little bit of tone again bring the tone down the edge of the ear that comes down to the bottom and then we've got the pull where the earring goes through the ear a little bit of tone above it and then around and underneath tone behind the earring and then we want just close to the edge and that's given a nice bit of three-dimensionality to the ear that we hadn't got before now again we've got this hair underneath the ear coming down to the back of his neck again using the sharp point just keep twisting the pencil we can indicate those lines coming down of the hair towards the earring again define the edge of the earring the inner part is darker and the bit that goes behind the ear the left hand side the inner part again you've got that darker line and another one kind of next to it if we put a dark line on the outer part you've got that highlighted bit that's showing up and just curve the underneath now I'm just going to come in with the putty rubber and that just pulls up the earring that little bit now on the actual ear itself I've got a highlight on the edge I'm just dabbing gently And then we've got a highlight right down the edge of the ear down the back again just indicating some of the hairs at the back that are coming out down to his collar but we can just dab using the putty rubber and we get those nice little highlight parts in the ear that we need Now, we do the same for the highlight bits using the putty rubber just to put some lines on. And then we come in and smooth them down. Just keep pinching your putty rubber into a sharper point. right up the edge of the hair at the back and coming up to the top of his head and these bits here again it's just adding little effect that you need to give that indication of the way and direction that the hair is actually going and bringing down over the eye <laughs> this highlighted part on the right hand side of his hair that's looking really really lovely now coming back in with the 2H pencil I can indicate these hairs without going too dark and it just adds that extra 
little bit of detail that you need. We've got the highlights here that we're going to keep, but where we've used the rubber down here, we can go over that with a brush or the smudging tool, the blending stump, and that will totally give us the highlights on the top and then soften the tones down here that we need. Again, I'm now using the side to the tip of the 2H pencil. Just increasing the tone slightly. Where we need it. And that's really looking lovely. So now get the blending stump. This one's really dirty. So just being careful. Again, just looking squint and you can see where you want some larger tonal areas in. That's fantastic. Now I'm going to come in with a 2B pencil. You can see here we've got these darker tones coming down over his ear and you're kind of doing the reverse. But a 4B would be too dark. So you can control it more using the 2B. And then here we've got on some little darker ones. You can see how that just gives us that more real definition in the hair that we're after. Here where the shadier parts are covered by the light hairs on top. Now right by the side here we've got the shadow coming down the cheek caused by the hair. And the 2B will get us the darkness that we actually need. And then even in the eyebrow, we can just build that up a little bit more. And then the shadow above his eye. Coming down to the tear duct. And then above here we've got a darker shadow part. And that just really works for us. Again, now just using the pencil dynamically to give us the deeper shadows as we come across. So again, right in the this arrow that we put in the parting of his hair, then going up to the top of his head. Now on this side, we really do need the 4B pencil because we need to build those darks. to make them stand out that little bit more. Again, right in his eye. The tear duct, the curve coming around. And 
that triangle of shadow going off into the corner of his eye, down the side of his cheek. And just using the flat of the pencil again, I'm just building up the tone where I need it to be. And that gives us a greater three dimensional effect on the side of his head. And you can see that really standing out. So now the dark where we put that to be and that little bit above his ear really darkened down in the neck and a couple of little black bits on his earring <laughs> and in the central part. So now we've got using the 4B just bringing those darks down over the front of his eye the right hand side of his his eyebrow and the right hand side of his parting now back with the 2B just darkening down into the tear duct just careful just being soft and careful Now I'm coming in with a new blending stump because the other one's just dying. And I'll just use that for the big parts. And I can just soften the lips, corner of his mouth, the lower lip. And I can just build those darks up underneath the nose. on the side of his cheek again just helping the transitions and those tonal qualities that we need and we've got the tone underneath his right eye sorry his left eye on the right hand side of the drawing shadow in the corner now I'm using the old oops the old one nearly dropped that on my drawing be very careful you don't want to drop something right in the center of somebody's face that you've spent a long time drawing so here now we just softening the effect of the shadows on the corner of his wrist, the edge of his wrist, then up the side of the thumb, that's looking absolutely lovely, I hope you're having fun, I'm having a blast with this, this is really really good so again just coming back in with the 4b pencil just increasing the dark in these areas on the jumper and you can see here we've got a real dark passage coming down and this is the three-dimensionality of the actual jumper and then again, on this side of the jumper, the shadow caused by his head and his hand and his arm, we need to just build that up quickly. And you can see already that's given us a bit more form and shape that's framing RM's head. 
Now, clean putty rubber, just pinching this up to get a nice clean point. And then here, coming up the front of the nose, on the side, we've got a nice highlight coming down. Then on the side of the nose, reflected highlight on the nostril, just a slight one on the side, reflected underneath the nostril there. Little bit just dabbing up the front of the nose as well. Again, we'll just soften this down. That bit on the highlight on his eyebrow. Then a little bit of a highlight in his eye. Again, the same on this side. Again, I'm just pulling this to a nice fine point. And just down by the tear duct above the top of it and inside. Then the top of the lip. And then we've got tops of the knuckles coming up and the top of the hand there. And you just dab a bit. Dab a bit of the lip. And just some nice little bits in the hair. Now, I'm coming in with the brush. I'm just cleaning it on the paper because we can just soften the bits. So the bits have just dabbed on the nose. I'm just going to use the putty rubber that's darker, that's been used. Just take some of the pencil off underneath his nose. And then on the side. And then we can dab that cheek the same in the center of that cheek and then on the top of the thumb now I'm going to come in and I'm going to use the blending stump on the thumb because that will allow me to push the tone around that I want quickly and easily without having to get the pencils out on it. That's looking absolutely lovely. Now I'm coming in with the old spent putty rubber. Because it won't pull off too much. And we want a little highlight on the top of the lower eyelid. There on the top of the upper eyelid. Same little bit on this side. And then a tiny little bit inside the eye. Just soften that down. Now we've got some thin hairs in that center bit. In between the parting a 
again just crisping up some of the highlights on the top of his hair and the smudging blending stump I want to darken that line down by his chin and going up behind the ear and that just some little 4B lines just using the sharp point <laughs> dark in between his lips and just increasing that a little bit and right up to the corner Again, these are just little final details, little highlight on the lip. Again, same on the upper lip. You've got reflected highlights off his hand. I'll come in with that and then just soften it down a little bit with the blending stump. Kind of little highlights on the ear. And that's pretty much it. Do you know, I'm actually really happy with that. And what seems really complex at the beginning, especially with the hair being white and everything being kind of reversed out, you think it's complex, but if you lay your foundation down correctly, you can actually draw something that's really complex like that quite quickly again i'm just bringing in a little bit of smudging using the blending stump again this these are just final details edge of the jumper and you've got his hair just coming down right down to the collar but I am really happy with that I hope you've had fun I've had an absolute blast drawing RM I hope you do too please do share it out with all your friends to the bts army and that would be fantastic use the hashtag drawing with billy please do like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next drawing lesson take care tedar